This is uh, the first major meeting of economic ministers uh, in 2015. Of course, there will be a few more meetings in the course of this year, uh, ending with the uh, summit in uh, November when economic ministers will get together again together with, with the leaders. And therefore, the meeting in Cote d'Ivoire is a very important, uh, very important one. It is a retreat. It is not a meeting. A retreat in the sense that uh, there's no set agenda, uh, quite free flowing. Uh, and uh, normally, in all the retreats, uh, we are very open and transparent and very frank. Uh, so this is an opportunity for the ten ministers together with the Asan Sec, uh, Asan Secretary General, to discuss the agenda for. For, for the whole of this year. And uh, the main item on the agenda, of course, uh, is to be community, an economic community by the, year to, by the end of 2015. We're having this in Kota Baru um, uh, because uh, uh, we need to uh, uh, showcase uh, some other parts of Malaysia. Uh, many meetings have been conducted in Kuala Lumpur, Langkawi, Penang in some cases, Kota Kanabaru. But Kota Baru has, has, has not hosted uh, any major international uh, meeting. So this is an opportunity for my ASEAN colleagues uh, to, to know a, a bit more about the lesser developed part of Malaysia. Malaysia is not the Klang Valley, Malaysia is not just Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia is Sabah, Sarawak and Malaysia is also Kelantan. Uh, and uh, by visiting, having this meeting in Kelantan, the retreat in Kelantan and visiting Kelantan, of course, ministers are going to have a good glimpse of what the other side of Malaysia looks like. Uh, and uh, it's a very short stay for most ministers. They're going to be there a couple of days. Officials will be there a couple of days earlier, so some officials will be in Kelantan for four days. So besides uh, having the ret retreat in the hotel in Kota Baru, we bring ministers to Rantau Panjang, which is a border town. And this is uh, a very significant uh, uh, program as far as we're concerned because uh, Ranta Panjang has been the entry point uh, for uh, goods and services and of course people coming from Thailand uh, and uh, coming from Thailand meaning not just Thais, uh, foreigners uh, who uh, travel to Malaysia through Thailand uh, one of the or the main entry point in East Coast is Ranta Panjang. So I bring them to Ranta Panjang firstly uh, for them to understand uh, uh, the Kelantan people, to know a bit more about the country, in particular Kelantan, rural Malaysia, Kota Baru is, is, is a town, small town, although it is a small, it is a small town, but uh, we need to get the ministers to uh, have a better feel of what rural Malaysia looks like. And secondly, we'll bring them to Ranta Panjang, uh, because uh, there's a bit of trade uh, between uh, Malaysia uh, and the uh, northern part of Malaysia, and I want ministers to have a look for themselves to have a first-hand experience of um, how easy or how difficult the movement of goods and people uh, is between uh, two ASEAN countries. So this is uh, a very important year for Malaysia, uh, Malaysia being chair of ASEAN, and of course a very uh, important event for the people of Kelantan. <coughs> and uh, we hope uh, that the people of Kelantan will, uh, will have a better idea of what ASEAN stands for, uh, the need to develop closer collaboration between various ASEAN member states. This is uh, not new as far as Thailand is concerned because uh, we have a fairly sizable number of Thais uh, living uh, in, in the northern part of, uh, of Kelantan. Uh, but uh, by bringing the meeting to Kelantan, you know, hopefully Kelantan people know a bit more about Indonesia, Philippines, Singapore. So that, that's the objective of having this meeting and, and, and these are some of the reasons why we decided to bring the meeting to Kelantan. Uh, the agenda is quite free-flowing. Having said that, of course, uh, we'll have some guidelines. Uh, the main purpose is to uh, see where, where we are in terms of progress uh, towards uh, creating uh, an integrated economic uh, and you know, closer economic integration uh, among ASEAN countries. Uh, in that context, therefore, we'll be looking at what we've done in the area of trade, in the area of investments, Trade facilitation, uh, non-tariff uh, barriers, yeah, business facilitation in the area of standards, yeah, uh, and we'll be talking also about uh, the need to have stronger engagement with the private sector. I mean, this is a meeting of ministers, a retreat, 
but we all know that uh, the private sector plays a very important role in Malaysia and in, indeed every country in ASEAN. Uh, therefore, we'll be talking a bit about the need to step up engagement uh, with uh, members of the private sector. And uh, we have uh, the chairman of the ASEAN Business Advisory Council. Uh, we have invited him to be there uh, as well to, you know, to be part of some of the proceedings. Uh, we have invited the Tusri Idris Jala uh, to share his experience in economic transformation of Malaysia. Uh, and uh, he's expected to put up a, pro a proposal uh, for uh, uh, a similar kind of uh, process we've been going through in Malaysia. Perhaps some countries might want to adopt a similar uh, uh, approach uh, of engaging with companies and uh, finding out what the issues and challenges are with a view uh, to achieving a closer economic integration. So basically, <coughs> this is uh, an opportunity uh, for ASEAN economic ministers to see where we are in this journey of closer economic integration. Uh, we would like to uh, achieve progress in the area of trade facilitation. We want to see more progress uh, in the area of non reducing non-tariff barriers. And we want to see, uh, we want to uh, discuss what more we can do uh, in the context of promoting, promoting uh, closer interaction with the members of the private sector with a view to here again uh, achieving uh, closer economic integration among ASEAN member states.